This is the last lesson for chapter one. Uh, it is over 1.7 and 1.8, deductive structure and statements of logic. Your essential question is how can I identify the parts of deductive reasoning and write logical statements? Deductive structure is a way of reasoning that is different than the way that you reasoned in Algebra 1. In Algebra 1, you used inductive reasoning. All that is, is that you looked at, you looked for patterns, and then from the patterns, you tried to make generalizations that describe the patterns, or you could call those function rules. In geometry, we use deductive reasoning. So we're actually starting with the generalizations, and we're applying them to specific um specific cases. There are four parts to deductive structure. Deductive structure is the system of thought used in geometry and it is based on four things. These four different things are undefined terms, assumptions, definitions, and theorems. And these can be used on the right hand side of a two column proof in the reasons column. Number one are undefined terms. These are the first things we learned this year. These include points, lines, and planes. We haven't talked about planes yet, but points and lines. Number two are assumptions and postulates. Assumptions we've talked about. Assumptions are things that we can safely assume to be true from a picture. And the way that we would write this in our two column proof is assumed from diagram. A postulate is a word that means unproved assumptions. And we're going to learn about some of those later on in the year. Definitions, you know a lot of definitions. These are also reversible. For example, if I say a triangle is a three-sided polygon, I can reverse that sentence. I can reverse the subject and object of the sentence to a three-sided polygon is a triangle. Last are theorems. These are statements that have already been proven. Um, you have already learned about a couple theorems and you will learn about lots more this year. But these are the four things that we can use as reasons on the right side of our two column proofs. Next we'll talk about logical statements. These are if-then statements and you might have heard these before. For example, if I wake up late then I'll miss my bus. That is an if-then statement. The hypothesis, which is represented with a P, follows the word if in an if-then statement. The conclusion, which we represent with the letter Q, follows the word then in an if-then statement. If the word then is not part of the sentence, then it is the other part of the sentence. Um, I usually use in the word hypothesis, I remember that P goes with it because P is in the word hypothesis. And I remember that Q is for conclusion because it kind of sounds like conclusion Q. I don't know. That's just how I remember it. You're going to do some examples of these in class. There are four types of these logical statements, conditional statements. And then conditional statements can be turned into converse, inverse, and contrapositive statements. But you're going to make a foldable in class and learn about that. There's one other thing that you need to know. You can also negate the hypothesis or conclusion. When we hear the word negate, we think of a negative number, or we think of changing the signs of something. If we negate something, that's all negation means. It just means to stick the word not into the sentence. If the sentence already has a not in it, then you would take it out. For example, if I do not go to bed early, then I cannot wake up on time. Both the hypothesis and conclusion of that if-then statement have been negated. We can link these logical statements together in something called the chain rule or the law of syllogism. Think of a chain. A chain links one end of the chain or one part of the chain links to the beginning of the next part of the chain and it keeps going and going and going. If we look at this statement, I know the symbols might not mean much to you now, but it says if P then Q 
and if Q then R, then if P then R. So we actually have three if then statements within this if then statement. But here's what this means. Notice that if P then Q links to if Q then R by the Q. And if they link by the Q, then that means we can jump from the P straight to the R. So let me give you an example with some sentences. Um, if I wake up late, then I miss my bus. That might be our first um, if-then statement. Then I can make another statement with the end of my last statement. If I miss my bus, then I'm late to class. That could be the second thing, the second if-then statement. Now if I link those together, I can make an overall conclusion or my last if-then statement where I link them together with the missing the bus part. And it goes like this. If I wake up late, that's the P part, then I miss my, or then I'm late to class. That's the R part. So we can um, do some examples of this in class, but you're going to bring this to class next time. We're going to do a foldable, and I hope you all have a great evening.